Hey guys, Mike here, and this is going to be a new tutorial. Um, this is going to be a libgdx tutorial. I just started with libgdx because I wanted to get into some OpenGL type stuff, and I figured libgdx is a pretty good entry point. So uh, let's just get started right into it. Right here, go to the libgdx website. It's libgdx.badlogicgames.com. I'm sure you'll find it. Go to the Downloads tab here, you'll find two builds, the latest stable version and the nightly version. Um, it doesn't really matter which one you pick, either one is fine. Uh, if you pick the nightly, you just get the uh, latest here. It should be anywhere around uh, 40 megabytes. This one is 42, I think. So, whatever. Um, so what exactly is libgdx? It's oh, right here it says Java Game Development Framework. It's pretty much like um, a sort of wrapper. You create a game and you uh, encapsulate it in a platform specific wrapper. If you want to make uh, turn it into a desktop game, just wrap it with the LG, um, what is it called? LWGGL application? If you want it to be an Android game, use an Android wrapper, iOS, HTML5. So it's pretty much just write the game once and then uh, use whichever wrapper you want. Uh, they call them starter classes, I guess. So just call them starter classes, whatever. So that's pretty much that. That's what libgdx does. So it makes it convenient to... Port isn't exactly the right word, but um, make platform-specific games. So let's go ahead and get started. Since we're using libgdx, um, you, we need two projects if we ever want to make any libgdx games. One is going to be the core project, we'll just call this Asteroids, and the another is going to be called Asteroids Desktop. This is going to be the desktop sort of wrapper class to the core Asteroids game. And that's what makes uh, libgdx so awesome. Since um, you have the core Asteroids game, you can uh, wrap it around a desktop app, Android, iOS, or HTML5. We are going to be doing desktop. So let's go ahead and get started here. We're going to create a new folder in the core Asteroids project called libs, and we're going to add a bunch of jars to it. Now hopefully you've already downloaded one of these two builds and you should have something that looks like this. It's just a bunch of jars, a bunch of stuff for Android, iOS, etc. We're going to need some stuff from here. We're going to need the gdx.jar, so just drag and drop that into the libs folder in the core asteroids project. Oh, by the way, we are, <laughs> if you haven't noticed, we're going to be making an asteroids game. Um, <laughs> So, we're going to need also the GDX sources. It should be under the sources directory. Just add that in there. And we're going to need to set up some stuff. Go here, right click the core project, build path, configure. And over here you should have a window that looks something like this. Go to the libraries tab. And we're going to add the gdx.jar that we just put into the libs directory. OK, drop that down, source attachment, we're going to attach the sources jar to it, so workspace, DX sources, OK. So that's good there. Also, go to order and export, check the checkbox over here for gdx.jar, that means that all the other projects will be able to see that jar. So, that's pretty much that. Next, we're going to create pretty much the same thing here with the desktop wrapper project. Another libs folder, and this time we're going to need three jars, um, GDX natives. Drag and drop that in there. We're going to need LWGGL and LWGGL natives. So that's all three of those. And we're going to configure the build path again. 
Um, go to the libraries tab and we're going to add those three jars. Boom. There they are. Okay, so now they should all be under this reference libraries tab. gdx.jar in the core project and lwjgl and natives in the desktop project. So that's pretty much that. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start off with the core project. Create a new package. I'm going to call this com.nita main. You can call it whatever you want. Um, and I'm going to create a new class. I'll call this game. So, GDX um, uses something called an application listener. This is pretty much uh, this pretty much turns the game class into an application. Application listener. Go ahead and import that. Should be something that looks like this. And we're going to go ahead and create the six methods that we need for the application listener. And they are public void create, public void render, um, public, oops, public void resize, int width and int height. Public void pause, public void uh, resume, and public void dispose. So those are the six uh, methods that we need for the application listener. Um, so let me just, I guess, describe each one. Create is the is a one-time method that gets called once when the game starts up. Render is a sort of game loop method. This is the method that gets called constantly throughout the game. So you're going to want to update the game logic and draw stuff in here. Resize gets called whenever you like change the size of the window for the game. Pause and resume are mo uh, mostly or mainly for the um, Android games. Just, you know, in case you're playing a game and all of a sudden someone calls you pause gets called, and then the call ends, resume gets called. Dispose is also a one-time method, just like create, and of course gets called when the application exits. Let's go ahead and get started. This is, um, this is pretty much it for the source. Let's go into the desktop wrapper, create a new package, I'll just call it, you know, give it the same package name. New class, main, this is our entry point for the game. So it's called main, obviously it's going to have the main function, public static void main string args. Okay. And we're going to be using something called um, an LWJGL application configuration. Uh, whew, uh, recording screen really is kind of small, but I want you guys to see the text, so new LWGGL application configuration. That is a long ass class name. Ah, and then I spelled it wrong. Application configuration. Oh, J JWGGL. It's supposed to be L. Okay. Um, so we're gonna put set a bunch of stuff. The title is going to be Asteroids. Um, oops. Width and height are going to be 400, uh, 500 by 400. Uh, height. This is height. CFD. Um, I'm using a crappy ass laptop that doesn't have any OpenGL 2.0, so it only has OpenGL 1.1. We're not going to be using any OpenGL 2, so this is going to be false. Um, resizable. False. I don't want the user to be able to resize the window. So, now that that's done, let's go ahead and create the actual um, desktop application wrapper thing. And we're going to use LWGGL application here. We're going to give it the game and the configurations that we have. Import. There it is. Uh, and this cannot be resolved to type. Right, so if we have a problem with this, that means that this project, the desktop wrapper, can't see anything from the source project. This has to be able to see the game.java. So what we want to do is right click the desktop project, build path, configure build path, 
projects, required projects on this build path, we need the core asteroids game project. So just add that in there, click OK, and it's fine. Boom, there it is. Anytime we want to run the game, we have to run the desktop application. So go ahead and run that. And here it is, our 500 by 400 uh, window with nothing in it. Let's go ahead and do a couple more things in game.java. This is, by the way, back to the core uh, game project. We're going to need the width and height. Um, just be accessible from everywhere, so we're going to make these all public static. Width static height. We're going to go ahead and grab those using gdx.graphics.getWidth and um, gx.graphics I can't type dot get height and import that so now these should be 500 by 400 and it gets this from the uh, LWGGL configuration so that's for the create and for the render um, now this is going to be the only time we ever use any GL OpenGL calls uh, directly, or not directly, I mean just the most OpenGL looking methods or whatever. GEX.GL.GLClear If anyone has any experience with OpenGL then they might find this um, comfortable, I guess. Or they'll be... they should know what this does. GLClear and we're going to be using GL10 dot gl color buffer bit basically what this does is um, clears the screen it draws this color over the entire screen so zero 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 is black so just this is pretty much just um, clear screen to black so that's pretty much it for that let's see what other colors we got red RGB, RGB, red and green. What what exactly is red and green? It's yellow, right? Okay, so that's yellow. So that works. So let me just change it back to zero zero zero. That's black. And run it again. So, uh, like I said before, if you want to run it, you have to go back to the main.java and run the desktop application. You can't run the core game because uh, there's nothing there. There's no main uh, function. So that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, here, uh, just a quick summary. We learned how to set up a libgdx game. Um, what exactly? Oh, I, I misspelled this. Asteroids. I just noticed. Let me just rename that. Asteroids. My bad. Spelled this right. Asteroids. Okay, so we learned what an LWJGL game exactly is. It's composed of two things: the core project and the wrapper project. And the core project can be reused for any wrapper that you want. If you want to make a desktop application, just do what I'm doing here. Just use an LWJGL application if you want. An Android game, just use an Android wrapper, whatever. So the mo this is pretty much it for the desktop wrapper. We're never ever going to touch this again because it's pretty much done. Now we're going to work on the actual game and the core project. Um, but that's for another video. So that's pretty much it for this first one, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.